Hey, I'm uh, I'm Jesse. I'm Kendrick. And uh, we did a Taproot Battle of the Wills, uh, titled it You Get What You Get and You Don't Throw a Fit. So the, the idea is inheritance planning with some secret conditions. Uh, so the, the thing about Taproot is it enables spending from a Taproot output without exposing all the other conditions. And a part of the script uh, can be verified against the hash of the entire script when using those uh, mass enabled addresses. So Bitcoin can be locked according to those smaller individual scripts without exposing all the conditions. Um, so the idea is that this is uh, useful for inheritance, um, especially when you have some contentious conditions. Um, and, and we've simplified it for, for our case, uh, is a challenge, but uh, this is about Tywin's plight. So uh, <laughs> Tywin Lannister wants to split the Lannister fortune between his two favorite sh children, Cersei and Jamie, and he doesn't want them to spend anything for another eighty thousand eight hundred sixty-nine blocks. So uh, first step is uh, create a sig single signature for Tywin and also create a pay to taproot address for the children. Yeah, so this one was a bit um, of a challenge because ideally I wanted to implement it to where there's some probabilistic outcome for each of the children. But I think with this simplified version, we decided to just have a P2TR address for them to figure out how they're going to spend it themselves. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll still have the locking condition before it gets sent uh, to this taproot address, but from there, they, they can figure it out. So yeah, with a with a PSBT to that paid to taproot address, um, we can have a, a policy condition in there. So overall, it's a three of three multi sig, um, and with that spending condition uh, using taproot. So uh, each of the children get a private key with the ability to sign, and the third condition is that time lock. So uh, one of the tools that we found was a nice visual representation, especially for me, um, is uh, this the VDK playground. Um, and so you can you can display the the different um, uh, con conditions to to meet that threshold to make the spend. So we've got Jamie's key, Cersei's key, and also that uh, the block height um, condition, the time lock. Uh, sure. So yeah, so this was basically, I mean, this is kind of a hack. So we got this from the CLI, but it maps out, I guess this one has the time like condition on it. And there's, okay, so I guess the way you would read this is, okay, there's a condition, there's a time lock. And then items here, this is zero and two. So the, the way at least where this was um, extracted from was, this is a PSBT from one of the children. So one of the children had signed. And then you have the timeline condition in this case that it had been fulfilled. Um, and then the second child, of course, is, is not signed here because it's only from the wallet, the, the wallet of the first child. So that's why you see a partial in there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And that's, this is it. Yeah. I mean, we can quickly talk through some of the, um, I guess, some of the design decisions that we, we tried to do here. Um, it was quite a challenge because um, over to the, oh, uh, the, the code, ES code. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and pardon the spaghetti code because uh, who refactors in the hackathon? You can have a taproot descriptor there with the older condition. The older condition is one of the branches, like one of the scripts. So, actually, no, I wasn't able to finish that okay. part because um, what we wanted to do was we wanted to get the policy under the mast, right? And then map, and then from the mast, you actually put in the taproot address. Okay. But in this case, we were just able to do so we created the wallet um it's pretty straightforward um yeah that's pretty straightforward here and then from this one i think because we used rust bitcoin and btk and and one of the things i was to figure out is because when you have a transaction builder here right you we add the recipient with which is this one so you can just put the p to tr and then you do the script the output script of that so i think this is pretty straightforward and then the policy path is this path here. 
which is the ID from the policy. But then obviously this one is not in the tap tree. Like it's not the tap tree, right? So that, that was the challenge that I was trying to figure out. Um, yeah. So is it two of two or three of three? Because I guess what I saw was this is a two with the timeline. Yes, it is a three of three in the sense that um, there's two signers plus the time lock condition, and all three of them have to be fulfilled before the funds are released. Okay. Where's wallet? Wallet is there's a top root wallet that I created way up here. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah, that's a function, yeah, but this is the function that had oh, to unwrap it. Yeah, because so <laughs> yeah, you need to go up here to see this. Yep. So. Okay, so you did use a tap root. You did create a tap root descriptor with a multi-A and a tap key, a two tap key. Yeah. And, um, so technically this should be a two, but um, yeah. Oh, I see. You just have problems using the older part. Yeah. I didn't do when I tried that. <laughs> okay. What's up? So, um, I see uh, two children need to maintain their private keys for this multi-six setup. What, what other data do you think you to hold on to in order to build Besides, um, what other data do they need? Yeah, I'm just kind of curious because it seems like it's not just like a, <coughs> kind of getting a descriptor or something. Like, it seems like in order to be able to do this tap there has to be some kind of complicated array of multi-six. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's probably why it is not the best design, I would say, for this because um, if well, that's like it's nice. I'm just I'm just curious what the data is. I'm just right, because it's just um, because the way this is uh, structured, right? I mean, all you need is so assuming that whichever x well, I guess in this either xpub that they have is the one that they want to sign from. That's all that they need. Because the spending condition, um, trying to think where that spending condition, because it's set. Like, you know, they lost their wallet and so they don't know anything about. Yes. Like, how do they, like, how do they even know that the paper belongs to them? That's a, they must need to know something. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, that's a good question. I actually haven't thought about that. So. I'm probably going to have to let everybody something to weigh on online. Because one of the other one of the other things I was playing with was I went because you know like similar to like what a revocable trust does right I wanted to have the ability for one of the branches to be the private to basically reveal if the original person actually committed the script so that they can reverse it before they pass right they, before they passed if they decide because you know, that could be instead of having an unspendable key you could make that um, make that the the, the, master, the master key, the master key right. And I think in terms of backing up, it would be whatever you would normally back up the descriptor wallet, like the descriptor and the, um, you know, whatever it would be. The descriptor would have one of the family calls it the other descriptor sampling or something like that. And another idea that too, that we were um, considering, uh, let's say the, uh, the kids did lose, um, did lose like those keys is to have another key to like their estate attorney with a hash pre-image. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a bit tougher to, to implement for obvious reasons. So yeah, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, this was, oh, uh, any other questions? Yeah, but, I mean, just uh, the, there is one branch then on the abstract tree, because it sounds like you need all those conditions to be satisfied. You need Cersei to sign, you need uh, yeah. Jamie to sign, you need your time lock to expire. So that's one branch. That's one branch. And then mm -hmm. you have a fake internal key that could be used like we were just talking about for uh, whatever. Right. Um, and that's built into the, the mask. The, yeah, the mask that produces the address. And uh, I guess if you wanted to make, be more elaborate on this, maybe you introduce Tyrion to the scheme yeah. and start saying, well, Tyrion and Cersei agree, or Jamie and Tyrion agree, or whatever forum that you decide to do. Okay. Exactly. I exactly. Um, I was going to make another comment. I totally forgot. Oh, yeah. It's our first hackathon, actually. So at least mine. So this is like, <laughs> it was so difficult. So I just wanted to say thanks to 
um, all the mentors and everything who helped make this happen. So 